The ancient practice of divining has been frowned upon by both science and religion throughout the ages, but its uses are still both popular and diverse in modern day Ireland. Joe Mullally from Kilbride Wicklow is one of Ireland's only full-time diviners. How I started in divining was that when I was about 20 years of age, um, a local man here who was a diviner came to the farm. I grew up on a farm locally here and he came to the farm to divine for water for a well. Um, a lot of the local farmers would be very interested in divining for looking for um, water on their fields or uh, looking for miss, missing cattle or sheep. And at that time, um, I obviously was fascinated by what he was doing, but I'd heard about divining and I'd been around it as a child anyway. But when he was gone, I picked up the stick he had been using to divine and discovered that I could get the same reaction. The response that individuals get uh, with holding the, uh, the fork twig or something like that may have some electromagnetic uh, source or reason. The most popular instruments that you see being used nowadays are rods called L rods and these are really two coat hangers. They're usually made from two coat hangers or two pieces of metal that are bent into the shape of an L and carried in the hands. And as we walk across the ground with rods like that looking for an underground water line for example, we point the rods forward and when we cross the underground water line the rods will cross over that line. They're the most popular ones. The most traditional rod, I suppose, and one that is still widely used, is the Y-rod. And the Y-rod is simply a piece of wood. Traditionally, it would be hazel wood. But by the way, any of these rods can be made of any material. The material is not relevant at all. Divining, in terms of how it works, is actually an instinct that we all have. Like every animal can find water, for instance. So there's a physical reaction in the body to the presence of water in the ground, which comes from the fact that flowing water underground creates a very strong earth magnetic field. That's the field that keeps us on the ground rather than floating into, into space. That's very, very intense over where there's an underground water stream. Anya Crossan runs a sports therapy practice in Dame Street, Dublin and divining has featured in her life from an early age to the present. Um, my dad had a diviner up the back garden <laughs> and um, he basically brought in, you know, a diviner and uh, we, we bore, you know, we bored well. Then when I was in Australia, um, I was on an opal mine and I was staying with a, a guy there called Crocodile Harry and he has an opal mine. And uh, one night he sent me down the mines in the dark with uh, a pair of rods because he thought that I would be a great diviner. So off I went into the dark down this long minefield and uh, he said, just stop when the rods cross. So I was walking and walking and getting more terrified by the minute because it was pitch black and just down a narrow uh, laneway. So then the next thing the rods crossed and he said, you know, are you all right there? I said, no, turn on the light, the rods are crossing. So um, when we looked, when he came running down, you know, the, the whole way into the mine shaft, you could see there was opal all the way along the seams of the walls on either side of me. So he was like, yeah, you know, it's, it's very easy to do. You're very sensitive. I thought you'd have the ability. So you can mine here as much as you want. <laughs> when we use the L rods, we point the two rods forward. Then as we approach the water line, you feel the sensations in the body and the rods begin to turn until when you're over the stream, they cross in front of the body. But when you put a divining rod in your hand, what happens then is that small automatic movements in the body, which happen uh, sort of unconsciously, but which we're not consciously aware of, they become evident. It's unlikely that uh, any there would be any um, feature that would be observable or felt on the ground surface that would indicate that there are metals at depth. We could be talking here about uh, 100 metres, we could be talking about a kilometre. In fact, I think the Navin mine goes down five kilometres. So it's a long way down and it's unlikely to have any surface expression. It's all up to interpretation really. You know, there's no kind of proven research to show that it actually does work. But for hundreds of years, people have been using it um, so it's very difficult to quantify so it's you know if you want to put it down to statistics and 
facts and figures, <clears throat> it's very difficult to do that because I don't think there is any research to, to actually quantify that it, it actually works. But um, the proof is there. It would be highly unlikely that uh, a reputable, um, you know, public financed um, um, mining company would use a diviner in, in any exploration program. Probably the most widely used tool in holistics with regard to divining is the pendulum. And with the pendulum, we actually can select from a number of different remedies. So what we would do there is we would move the pendulum over each box, looking for the particular remedy that we need to use. And then when we bind the box in the remedy, the pendulum will change its movement, go around in a circle. And at that point, we can simply choose the remedy itself, retest it, and then give it to the client. OK, if we're divining for a missing person, what happens in those situations is that the relatives will provide uh, items of clothing or something personal, a personal item belonging to the person concerned. And then, as diviners, we'll do our best to locate where that person is. And also, we will have an insight often into whether the person is alive or dead. And then we look on a map to see if we're drawn to a specific area with the pendulum usually going across the bottom of the map or up the side of the map. And when we locate the area, the pendulum again will change its direction and we usually mark that location with a pen. A very interesting um, divining uh, situation that I came across was that uh, in the 80s when mineral exploration for gold in Ireland was particularly rampant and there were lots of companies out in the field looking for gold and a colleague of mine uh, got a phone call uh, from some farmer saying that they had uh, located a, s a source of gold and he ran, an, uh, this friend of mine ran an, an exploration company and he was particularly interested. So he invited the, the gentleman up to his house and when they arrived um, he asked them to show uh, where on the map that they'd brought, where was the deposit. And the gentleman laid out the map on the table and uh, then uh, went ahead and held the pendulum over the map and pointed out to my colleague, who was a geologist, um, that uh, where the pendulum moved, uh, they thought there was definitely um, gold, which was a surprise to my colleague uh, because uh, the rocks that they were underneath that area wouldn't have usually carried gold. And just out of interest, he asked them how did he, how did they uh, decide on in telling him? Because there were lots of other companies looking for gold, and they then said, well, they'd went, gone to the yellow pages and uh, held the pendulum over the yellow pages, and the pendulum seemed to move on his name, so that's why they rang him. There's a tradition that nearly everybody knows about, right? And there's different versions of it, of taking a, a woman's ring and suspending it on a string and holding it over her tummy to see what sex a baby is when she's pregnant. That's a simple divining exercise. So in this case, <clears throat> we're going to uh, just check out and see if our crystal can give us any identification on the sex of my lovely baby here. I haven't actually tried this before. Basically, this is one of the crystals that some people might use to divine. Okay, is this baby a boy? And again, we just have to wait. And sometimes, now this is a don't know response, which is not what I want to know, but ah, here we go. Now you have, and you have to be very careful because you just have to wait, wait it out. So it's giving me a yes response. So as far as we know, <laughs> I'm having a boy and not twins. 